fold my back. Yeah, so uh, you got, I, I've gone to chiropractors for years since I was a little kid. Wow. Really? Oh, yeah. I had uh, the house for business with a lazy eye, and oh. they thought that, that by going to the chiropractor that, that would help me. I it, actually had a bad back surgery. Oh, really? Yeah. If I, if I, if I do this, try to, you know, look across this, side, yeah, yeah. this eye stays over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, you know, you and I usually have a good uh, yeah. flow together, so. Absolutely. Hmm. And as always, you know, there's no setup here. It's yeah. just us talking. Yeah. Um, what we probably do out there, we budget uh, this week. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, I got that right there. Yeah, budget things. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I have a crisis. Uh, I right got, there? I got a chance to. I, I got two for two. Yeah, I got, I got a chance to grill Mayor Adams, actually. Mm -hmm. Post Support for Chautauqua Sunrise has been provided by WRFA. Westfield Memorial Hospital provides high quality health care to residents of Western New York, offering patients the most sophisticated medical advancements while keeping the ease and familiarity of a community hospital. Support for Chautauqua Sunrise has been provided by WRFA 107.9 FM, Jamestown's public radio station, streaming online 24-7 at WRFALP.com. Low power to the people. Meter's Restaurant, a family tradition for over 50 years in downtown Ripley, is a proud supporter of Chautauqua Sunrise. Meter's provides all-day dining, banquet services, and custom catering specializing in pie. Funding for Chautauqua Sunrise is provided in part by the Chautauqua County Industrial Development Agency with offices in Jamestown and Dunkirk helping businesses to prosper throughout Chautauqua County. From supporting people with disabilities to enjoy great lives to providing health care services that are available to anyone, the Resource Center has been improving our county for more than 60 years. Learn more about how the Resource Center makes a positive difference in people's lives. Is getting vaccinated on your to-do list? We can help you check it off because we make getting vaccinated easy. You've got this because we've got you. To learn more, visit yougotthis.usaging.org. From the Access Chautauqua Studios in Mayville, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Chautauqua Sunrise is hosted by Doc Hamels and supported by the award-winning volunteers at Access Chautauqua. We are here to share local news, colorful interviews, and events of interest to everyone. Chautauqua Sunrise is broadcast live Saturday mornings each week from 9 to 10 a.m. Send events via email or call us live. Check us out on YouTube and Facebook. And now, from the Access Chautauqua Studios, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Good morning, everybody. I'm Doc Hamels, and welcome to an extremely special edition of Chautauqua Sunrise. Today is our 500th show birthday. It's hard to believe. Uh, yeah, 500 shows, and we have a very special guest in store for us today, and a great show as we celebrate 500 shows. Uh, I am in total shock that we are this far down the road. Uh, and uh, so many of you have been with us from day one, uh, back in 2014, I guess we started this in July, I believe, and here we are 500 shows later. And my crew tells me, if you take the amount of shows and you string them from one end to the other, you would, and you watched every one of them, binge watched them, without eating, sleeping, or doing anything, uh, it would be just about 21 days of non-stop television. That's even better than MASH. <laughs> So anyways, it's uh, just unbelievable. So um, uh, we have uh, 
no announcements to speak of today because we're, we're pre-taping this show. So this is, today is February 24th, I'm in the future. And you can't call in, so unfortunately uh, we won't be able to chat with you. But we had to work our schedules around so we could get everybody here on our 500 show and uh, have it ready for February 24th. So nonetheless, I hope you enjoy the show. Jeff, would you pop up that picture that I sent in uh, with that circular picture, please? Could you do that? There we go. I had a very special cake for me and the crew and my guests today for our 500 show. And I want to do a shout out to the ladies at Tops in Mayville. They were able to, to fix my cake for me and have it ready for the crew. So we're going to be uh, eating some very special Chautauqua Sunrise cake later. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, at this point in time, I want to do a shout out to, to some key people here that have been with us from just about day one, I think everybody. Our station manager, uh, Chuck Kelsey, he does all this magic behind the scenes. He does the press releases and so forth. And then I've got my uh, show director, uh, Chris Burt. Again, you don't see much of these guys uh, because they're behind the scenes. They're, they're running the tapes and doing the edits and doing all kinds of stuff. And uh, so Chris has been with me from day one. My engineer, of course, Jeff Zook, he's been with me. Uh, well, all these guys, actually, we were on the senior report together, so we go back at least 13 years. But Jeff has been my engineer right along, and he's the one that pops things up and brings up pictures and videos and, and well, makes me look skinny. Uh, better work a little harder on that one, Jeff. <laughs> then my cameraman who's been with me quite a long time. I don't know, have you been with me from day one, Jess? I think your dad was with me for a while, and then you somehow you showed up one day, and there we are, but it's been a long time. So Justin Burt's my my cameraman is, I, saw my, I often say, my concierge. He gets coffee for folks, and he's just a, just a swell all-around guy that helps me out here every Saturday morning. And then uh, finally, shout out to Randy Burt, who uh, we haven't given him an official title. He's a tech, he's a cameraman, he uh, answers the phone, he's, he's like our all-around uh, guy that when there's something needed to be done, we uh, ask him to do it. So thanks for the crew. Uh, 500 shows, that's... That's pretty awesome. We've had a number of uh, fill-in um, co-hosts, not too often, uh, give me a break so Barb and I can go on vacation from time to time or something pops up. But uh, Randy and Jeff and uh, Jim's, Jim Subject and uh, we had a, um, Mrs. Wessling was here a little bit and a couple other folks over the years. But uh, it's been a while since we've had the subs. But uh, Randy's been my go-to guy lately and I appreciate that. So we keep things rolling right along. If you think about the topics we've covered here, I can't, I don't even know how many topics we've covered, but it's 99.9% .9 of the time it's been about Chautauqua County, the things about Chautauqua County, and as I always say, the good and the bad, the dark and the light. We talked about, you know, celebrating uh, events. We've talked about the bell under's belly of, of things, the human trafficking and drugs and suicide. We talk about the cel uh, celebrations of, of, of student successes in, in companies and so forth. We've, we have musicians here, we, we celebrate life, we do a, lots of things here, but it's all about Chautauqua County and I try to keep it that way. That's been mission day one, talking about us here. And um, due to the work of the crew, not only do we talk about it here in the western part of the, of the county, we're able to get it on WRFA 107.9, Tuesdays at one o'clock, and so appreciative of our connection with those folks that have been putting our soundtrack uh, every week and uh, we have a, a, just a, a great relationship if they have something going on there or at the reg we try to promote their events and, and vice versa and so uh, also because of the work of the crew we stream alive around the world and what does that mean that means Chautauqua County gets out of out of New York State. We talk about what we're talking about and people that are doing good things, they hear about us in the Ukraine, they hear about us across the United States, Australia, down into Europe and all over the place. So it's, it's just been a great ride, 500 shows. I don't even know what we're going to do in the next 100, but uh, we're always pushing technology here. And when social media changes, we try to go with, with, the, with the tide. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. <laughs> we're everywhere. And the guys are, are really good about helping me to do that. So just looking at anniversaries real quick, for those of you that may or may not remember any of these, every 100 shows I've had a special guest. So I had to go back and think about this a little bit, and I realized that it's a little bit probably uh, slanted towards family, but 
family is real important to me. So for my Hunter's show, and you see him every single week in the opening credits is my dad. Uh, he's passed now, but he was my 100th guest. And what a treat it was for him to talk about his life with me. And uh, he's the one that has the, mil the ball cap with the, the army on it in the beginning of the credits. And uh, he, uh, he really enjoyed himself, and I remember that always. And what a great way to capture good memories is to get a video. So I always recommend, if you have the opportunity, sit down with your family and share stories, because when they're gone, the stories are gone too. So. Something to think about. Two Hunter Show. Senator Catherine Young. We thought two hundred was a big deal. Remember? Justin was here for that. Emerald Weish was here. She had just come on. Yep, she had a proclamation at that time and I'm so proud of that. And it's hanging in the in the hallway down there here at the studio and she came on and we just thought, well, that was just unbelievable. Well, then somehow we got to 300. <laughs> and then I had my father-in-law who was in the, the, the Navy during World War II and we talked about his, his life story and so forth and that was really cool. So we thought, well, 300 is good. Well, then we got to 400. And then I thought, well, who should I have? Well, I, I come from a relatively small immediate family and I had my brother on and, um, you know, he. <laughs> Being brothers, I don't know how it is for you and your family, but you always go like, what's the setup? He's going to get me on TV. And it was just a fun interview to talk about my own brother and, and his career because we are <clears throat> very similar in many regards, but we went in different directions and then ended up meeting in the middle at times and, and back and forth. So then uh, I, I won't tell you who my guest is yet because I'll, I'll introduce him, but I don't even remember what it was months ago. My guest was here and we were talking about, we were approaching our 500th uh, show and he said, I want to be your 500th guest. I said, well, all right. <laughs> and so that locked it in. And so we're going to be introducing him shortly here. So, um, Right. <laughs> and Justin is always, uh, you, you can never see Justin, he's always talking to me off camera here and we always have a lot of fun. And uh, we were trying to guess who the different guests were going to be over the years. So I guess I'm not going to take up any more time with uh, pre-show here uh, in the beginning. We're going to go a public service announcement and then you're going to meet number 500, my 500th guest. So stay tuned. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in New York, because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. Wow, I'm not sure if I could do that. I guess I'm pretty tough. You gotta, you gotta have a little bit of toughness to be a ref, but absolutely, you got, yeah, you gotta run up and down the court, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, so if you're interested, check out, uh, go to your school districts and they'll, uh, they'll work with you to get the training. There's classes to be referees and all that sort of thing and coaches and so on, and we gotta support our kids. All right, no more, no more discussion on anything else other than I wanna welcome back to the show who's a friend of mine. We've known each other quite a long time in, in so many of his different positions. Uh, State Senator, New York State Senator, George Burrell. George, we're here. We made it. Here we are, 500. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you. I am so honored to be here, to be your 500th guest. And, you know, to all you guys, Justin, Chris, Jeff, Randy, all, you know, uh, thank you very much for all you've done. You bring a lot of great information and a lot of great, uh, just I guess a lot of great joy to people across Chautauqua County. So thank you. You know, I appreciate that because you know, we sit here on this side of the camera, we go home when we're done, we see some people viewed the show, but we know a lot of people watch the show, but we don't know how many. But to hear that we're appreciated, that that's important because we don't get a lot of feedback sometimes, so thanks. Yeah, well, and, and I think that, uh, you know, I know folks call in uh, mm -hmm. when we're on. I know we're not live today, right. but uh, but but still, I think it's just great that uh, there's that interaction, right? And then, what's the multiplier? People listen on WRFA, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, like you said, you live stream it. People can watch it. Uh, anyway. You know, yeah, absolutely. I know. Uh, I get my Facebook alert at 9 a.m. on Saturday <laughs> morning that you're going awesome. live. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, so it's uh, it's been a, a, a great run, a great show. So uh, and. Uh, uh, maybe now would be a. Uh, I would like. There's something I would like to present. Okay. And I will. I will present it to you, Doc. But on behalf of 
the New York State Senate. Wow. Which really can't gr agree on a lot, but we do agree that it's amazing <laughs> that there has been 500 oh my gosh. episodes of Look Chautauqua at Today. Uh, Chautauqua Sunrise, excuse me. Uh, Chautauqua Sunrise, 500, uh, 500th show. And uh, this is a proclamation. It's official. It's official, official in the Senate. Uh, and it's a, uh, uh, it is my pleasure to present this to Chautauqua Sunrise, your entire crew, uh, and oh, everyone. Well, that, well that on does behalf this. of my crew and myself, thank you. Yes, absolutely. This is quite an honor. Yeah. So what, this is something that goes before the, all the Senate on the floor? So, yeah. So this is a, this is a, a proclamation. So yes, this is uh, this is into the uh, the permanent record. Wow. Uh, so uh, that, that's uh, the, the, the you will be memorialized, as they call it, <laughs> memorialized into the uh, into the record of our of our Senate. This uh, is readings. outstanding. Yeah, so, thank you so yeah, much. Very very much uh, and well deserved. And thank you for the service that you do to the people wow. for the people of Chicago. How about how, would you like to read the whole thing? Sure, please, absolutely. Please do because people maybe couldn't read it from on the All screen. Right. If only my long arms were a little longer. No, luckily the, the text is big <laughs> enough. So. Whereas a great state is only as great as those persons who give exemplary service to their community, whether through participation in voluntary programs, through unique personal achievements or in their, in their professional or other endeavors, individual acts of heroism, or simply through a life of good time, good, lifetime of good citizenship. And whereas such service, which is truly the lifeblood of the community and the state, so often goes unrecognized and unrewarded, now there for it being resolved that as a duly elected member of the New York State Senate, I recognize that in Doc Hamill's 500th show for Chautauqua Sunrise, we have an outstanding citizen, one who is worthy of the esteem of both the community and the great state of New York. Wow. And of course, citizens, because yeah. of, the, of the folks that you all, they all make this happen, right? Absolutely. Uh, We're a crew. We can't yeah. do it without each other. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it is actually dated today. Well, thank uh, you. So, uh, awesome. There you go. Well, thanks again. Thank you. And uh, again, very much appreciate it. So, are there other uh, cable access stations in this world? <laughs> we we start to wonder because we know that that's gets, it's 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 not an easy thing to do to keep a station going like this. Well, you know, look, we live in a world of uh, short attention spans, right? Right. Uh, and uh, if you uh, if you look at social media in particular, these they, they call them reels. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, oh yeah, uh, I see them. Right. Yeah. So, and uh, I'm told that uh, you know once you get past 30 seconds, you lose X amount of people. Once you get past a minute, you lose a number. And by a minute and a half, you lost everybody. Mm -hmm. So here we are to give uh, a, a nice uh, slow burn, if you will, uh, of information. And, and I think that's why your audience truly appreciates it. Well, you know, and I thank you for that. And I think the, mm -hmm. the other thing is, and I, and I remind people of this, is that Chautauqua Sunrise is really sort of like a library. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, if you wanted to look up a show on the veteran services for Chautauqua County, you put Chautauqua Sunrise, put veterans, and up pops the, the videos of this show on YouTube. Yeah. And there's phone numbers, there's people's names, there's, there's places to go to and so forth. Or during the week, because they, they broadcast as a 2 and A, um, that you miss the show, and maybe if you don't have a fancy DVR or whatever, you can catch it again, you know what I mean? Yes. And, um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, it, it, I, there aren't... A, I think we're the only, we're the only live TV show in Chautauqua County. Are, where else in in uh, other than the big cities in your other dis rest of your district? Are there other shows? Yeah, so there are other uh, stations. Uh, you have, of course, you've got Olean mm -hmm. and a few others. But but I, I'm not aware of any other you know live shows like this. Yeah, um, you yeah. know, and uh, um, of course I may hear from some after this, right? After <laughs> <laughs> of course, don't yeah, you know? Yeah, we, exactly. We, we've got 700 that shows. <laughs> that happens to me every time. You know, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So. Darn if you uh, do. Yeah, that's right. So, so today, but it's today's about Chautauqua Sunrise. Right, right. Well, I'm just curious because I know that uh, Jamestown and, and Dunkirk and Fredonia have had yes. cable shows, and, and they're limited to a certain degree, but not live. And right. uh, and then, uh, so yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. You know, at, at this point too, I, I need to do a shout out to the Powers family. Uh, Reed Powers. Uh, had the uh, senior report here for quite a long time. He hit 960 shows plus or something along these lines. I keep looking at Justin to make sure I'm on right track because we know a lot of these statistics. But Reed uh, really laid the groundwork for the uh, 
Access, uh, Chautauqua Access, uh, Access Chautauqua, they had different names, Channel 5, now we're Channel 1301. So there's some 26, 27 years of history here, but he was the, the mover and shaker in the early days of, of, of live TV and shows that are sort of like this. His, his emphasis was different. It was a lot of senior issues were mine broader. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but he, uh, he kind of walked me through the process. I remember very clearly it's in the uh, mid '90s, I think maybe '95, '96. We I walked into my in-laws' uh, kitchen, with my wife, and they were playing bridge. You might say, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> and there's Reed with his wife Jane, and they're playing bridge with my in-laws because they were in a bridge club of some sort. And Reed looks at me and says, "You want to be on my TV show?" Just like you know, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even know there was a TV show. And he explained it, and because I was working for Bosey's at the time, and I said, "Shh." Sure. Well, the next thing I know, I'm on the show a couple of times. He said, you know, you'd make a good da -da -da. And then I was co-hosting when he wasn't around and as a sub. And then the next thing I know, uh, Mort Flexer was his sort of his uh, Ed McMahon, his sidekick. <laughs> I took over that role. And then, of course, uh, the rest is history. Uh, Reed, uh, unfortunately, passed away in 2014. And then I, I created Chautauqua Sunrise. So here we are. Well, I, exactly. Now, wait a minute. Didn't you play the drums or something at the... Uh <laughs> 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 I play guitar a lot yeah, exactly. of things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we do a lot of things. Yeah, that's a, I was saying, it's a, it's a variety. It was a variety show. It was yeah, a variety yeah. show. So, uh, George, you and I have known each other since, gosh, you were a legislator, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. And from that day forward, we, 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 you were on the show. Uh, then you became county, you were running for county executive, yep. and I interviewed you at that point. Yep. And then I said, I think to both candidates, if you're elected, would you come back on my show? And you did, yeah. as county executive. And the next thing I know, you're state senator, and then you got elected. How many times have you been elected now? A couple times, So right? yeah, yeah, so a special election in 2019, then again in 2020, a year later, and then 2022. Wow. And of course, because we run every two years, I'm running again, again this year. Yeah, so it's, uh, right. uh, yeah, so it's been, a, it was a lot of, a, it's been a lot of elections in a relatively short period of time. So yeah. yeah, starting with that. So so I, and 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 people say you know Borello. I go yeah, we're friends. Yes, and yes, we and are. we we chuckle about it because people know I'm a Democrat and they know you're a Republican, and we always say this all the time. We're not a whole lot different between us. No, no. <laughs> well yeah, and, and I think that's you know locally here, and I think you know I come from a family of Democrats. My mm -hmm. father. You know, my grandfather. So where did you grow up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I hear that all the time. Uh, no, so, no, I can't. Yeah, yeah. No, my, my grandfather, who I'm named after, was mm -hmm. mayor of Silver Creek back mm -hmm. in the 1980s. Wow. And, uh, yeah. You know, so when my, my father was a trustee in the village of Silver Creek. And mm -hmm. I actually grew up in, in Fredonia. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, and I was, and politics was kind of in my blood. I, mm -hmm. you know, I, was, in, I was involved early on in politics uh, back in high school days, back in the days of, uh, Jack Lenzer and, mm -hmm. uh, and and so many other great mentors that we've had. Uh, so, yeah. So it's a. Uh, uh, but yeah. I th I, but my. I think the point is is that um, here locally, it's about people, not party. Yeah. And uh, and I think that's why you and I have become friends yeah. and and so many other people. You know, I, I don't think I ever told you this little, little uh, anecdote. Um, I was sitting on some board. I don't even remember what board it was. And Pat Christina was part of it. I think it was uh, la, 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 probably uh, COI. I yeah. think she was on that board with me. And you were running for legislator. So she goes, oh, I like that Georgie Barella. <laughs> He's one of my favorite all-time students. And I go, really? Uh, yeah, she's she great, great <laughs> she lady. She loved you. Oh, she's such a great lady. Yeah, yeah and, uh, and, we uh, miss her. Yeah, and uh, yeah, absolutely miss her a great deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I had Grew up with her kids. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. she she really put a good word in for you. Awesome, so I remember that distinctly. So George, you've been state senator now since nineteen? No, what, late what? late nineteen, late November twenty fourth, I think is when I was. So call it call it twenty twenty. So you know, just like uh, P J Wendell, both of you made this big move, and then we hit the pandemic. Yes. Holy cow! What a time to be in the, into those those roles of leadership. Yeah. And uh, so you really had a, quite a baptism of all this stuff. So looking back, are, are there anything, things that you've learned that you wanted to share right now? I mean, we, we've got a good half hour to talk about whatever we want to talk about, but I like to kind of just go back a little bit and say, what did you learn as state senator now over all these years? You know, um, it's interesting because you, you, you realize now that we, you know, there was, um, we, we lost a lot in Albany because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We weren't together as a group. We were, you know, everything was remote. Right. Um, and that actually um, created, I, I think, a greater division between the parties. Yeah. 
um, because you could often go out, uh, whether it's out to dinner afterwards or just seeing people in the hallway or yeah. chatting. Listen on the and floor. talk. Yes, person exactly. to person. Uh, we have a we have a, a Senate lounge where you know we can go in. You know, uh, when I say lounge, I don't mean alcohol. It's just uh, you know, it's, it's a, <laughs> it sounds like cigars. Yeah, yeah, yeah and exactly. Wine no, here. it's uh, yeah, no, it's it's it, it's it's a it's a platter full of cold cuts and some <laughs> granola bars. Uh, Some but place it's to chill out, yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, you, you're you know sometimes the sessions get long, and you yeah. can you know get up and go into the lounge or go in before. But yeah. that was also an opportunity to, to interact. Yeah. So you saw a uh, a division that was created, um, and because we really didn't see each other, and, and we didn't, there wasn't uh, you know there, so that that and that lasted for a long time. The halls of Albany. Were so, so I'm assuming empty. to do business, you were on the little screen, right? Yes. So how do, how in the world do you debate and be nice? in these little tiny boxes on Zoom or whatever you were using. It's terrible. Exactly. You know, and look, <clears> there's, there's, no, there's no doubt that I think you know, going remote is, is the future. However, that being said, we're already seeing uh, you know, people who thought that after the pandemic, the, the pandemic that was it, they were going to be remote forever. Yeah. Uh, they are now coming back. And people, uh, have, they've missed interaction with one another. Uh, and, and I think that's... The, uh, we are, you know, we're social beings as yes. humans, Absolutely. and you know, we, we the whole idea of well, it's safer, it's more convenient, it's more efficient, um, that goes out the window when you start talking about the quality of life, and so I think we're seeing a return to in person. You, of course, you see now people are out doing things, go, uh, you know, you know, you go to events now. To, oh yeah, I announce you know, them all the time. Yeah, Absolutely, yeah, 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 and and uh, so and look, there's a level of caution uh, at some points, but the bottom line is. You know, people want to be together, and uh, and I think that's what I love most about Chautauqua County is we're great people, we're friendly people. Uh, there are so many places to go, so many things to do uh, around this county, uh, and really throughout Western New York in general. And uh, and that the pandemic put a pause on that, but that pause is over, and people are back at it. It's hard to find a stranger in Chautauqua County. Amen. Somebody you just a friend you haven't met yet. Yeah, exactly. You know and. 500 shows, I've talked to so many people, and, you know, everybody's polling for everybody. Yes. It's not like us against them, you know. No. I, I just don't get that feeling. No. You no. know, and like I said, I've, we've covered some tough topics here. Sometimes I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm on network TV because of the topics we cover, but uh, people genuinely come here and genuinely want to save lives, make lives better for other people. We were we were just talking with Stephanie Stevens from the YWCA and mm -hmm. talking about child care, yes. you know, and, and advocation uh, advocating for for child care in Washington D.C. We have local people that are doing things like that, and that's that takes a lot of energy and time and dedication. We got people doing that. Yeah, veterans, seniors, Absolutely. people with special needs. Mm -hmm. uh, child care is a huge issue. It's a cornerstone of our economy for people to be able to have a good quality of life and be able to you know take care of themselves by being able to earn a living. That's, uh, you know, that, that's really uh, why child care is so important, right? And, uh, you know, but, but, but we have so many people that are advocating. And, uh, you, know, this, this, you know, this certificate I gave you, it talks about the, the people that are the unsung heroes of our community, right? And that, to me, is um, it's important because you also bring some of those unsung heroes onto this show. Absolutely. We look for them. Yes, absolutely. And they, and they get to talk about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, hopefully that has a multiplier effect yeah. for them, for yeah. sure. You know, from time to time we do get um, those kinds of comments, and you know, um, we we're pretty humble here. I think, I, I, you know, we don't make a big deal about what we do. And I'll be out at a restaurant, like in Erie, Pennsylvania, in a booth with my wife, and I'll hear. That must be Doc Hamels. And I go, oh, do I owe you money? Uh, why do I know you? <laughs> and they watch the show, or yeah. they read, you know, the article that the, the column I write for Silver, or whatever. And you know, and so it's it's just what we do. We don't yeah. really think about it. And not one of us gets rich from this. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, um, I always ask you this question, and and I don't. I'm not trying to blame media. But they always make you as the naysayer in, in the things I read. You must agree on something out there, right? Well, uh, here's what I would tell you. Yeah. Um, the stuff that we get along on doesn't is not newsworthy most yeah. of the time, right? Yeah. Um, so we voted on, I think, a 1,000 bills last year in the Senate. Wow. Um, the vast majority of those passed, to the, uh, passed the Senate unanimously. Mm -hmm. Bipartisan wow. support. That's terrific. So, uh, but... It's the things that that cause uh, I, the things that we debate, 
uh, the things that we disagree on, that, those are the newsworthy things. Yeah, it's, I yeah. see the headlines. You see the headlines. I'll yeah. tell you. Burrell speaks out against, and yeah. Burrell says no to this. Yeah. It's never like uh, Burrell agreed on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and I will say, though, that I do, uh, we, do get, we did get some great press on, like, the Nourish New York program, mm -hmm. which is an amazing bipartisan uh, effort, uh, uh, talking about it again because we need to make some changes to that program. Uh, there's. I, I will also, I guess, take a little uh, tip of the hat to uh, Tom Dinopoli, another you know, a downstate Democrat. When he came to town uh, and he spoke at the um, the luncheon for the Chamber of Commerce, he made a point to say that you know that that uh, he and I get along well. That I was been a strong advocate for his role as uh, you know, in, in uh, the yeah, yeah. In the, and, and that he actually said you know he's. He has uh, he he works well across the aisle. So so you know um, for him to take the time to say that, and then of course he joked at the end. He goes, and by the way, if a downstate Democrat saying something good about an upstate Republican is bad for him, take back everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, so I'll so I'll take those moments as people in in, in Albany uh, notice that, yeah. and um, uh, and and there's no question about it. I want to advocate for the things that I think are important. I don't like it when we pass bills that are harmful to small business or to agriculture or if we rush too too uh, quickly into something without doing any due diligence i'm going to be the first one to point that out because i think that's the that's it's important for us to do those things you know and I, people don't know this about me I, I i'm sort of like that on boards of directors yeah. i'm the guy that says um can i have a question please and they go oh no here we go because <laughs> <laughs> i sit quietly for a long time and i listen and i really try to process it and i go like this doesn't make any sense to me yeah. and then so you have to have people to question it and people say well he's just he's just being a stick in the mud or he's trying to hold things up no I, we need to have dialogue and yes. like you say get to the to the meat of, of what you're talking about because um what they call those things um unanticipated consequences <laughs> yes you know yes. that's the one thing i learned early in my career as a leader is that what i always thought was a good idea may have unanticipated consequences that i wasn't even think about that are not good yeah in fact uh, i will give credit to uh uh, my friend, uh, f uh, former Senator Ed Rath, who, who's mm -hmm. called Albany the land of unintended consequences. Oh. Yeah, uh, so that, that's... That's perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah and, and it's true. You know, um, somebody hears about something and they, and they think that they have a solution um, and they don't think through all of the other impacts that that, will, that change will cause, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, old, uh, the old saying sometimes, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the cure is worse than the disease. Uh, so that that's what we try to avoid, and that's where I think, oftentimes we don't go down that path far enough. Um, you know, people think that there's like some big room in Albany that's filled with the experts on everything, from you know agriculture to climate change, to, <laughs> and that we write a you know we write these bills and we hand it off to this group of experts who thoroughly go through it and and vet it and change it. No, that does not happen, okay? There are bills that just fall out of people's heads and end up on the floor of the Senate. I hate to say it that way, but it's true. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and that's evidenced by the fact that uh, better than half of the bills we vote on every year are called chapter amendments. Okay. Chapter amendments are changes, right, to right. previous legislation. Okay, gotcha. So, so if more than half of what we vote on are changes to the bills we voted on before, that tells you not enough due diligence is done. Yeah, so you go back and fix things or yes. those unanticipated consequences. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, like the SAFE Act was one of them, I remember. Yeah, and they've, uh, you know, there were some sweet tweaks to that and... Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, we, we can talk about uh, any number of issues, but that was certainly something. Yeah. Uh, bail reform, same thing. You yeah. know, uh, that uh, unintended consequences, yeah. unanticipated Seemed consequences. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, without a doubt. So those are, and I and I and I will say, Assemblyman Andy Goodell, who's been a, also a stalwart as well, mm -hmm. he gets things done as well. Uh, uh, but um, you know, we, the things that just quietly happen that uh, you know that are good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously they're just not. Uh, I don't want to see even say newsworthy. I'm not going to blame the media. I'm going to just say that they, you know, maybe we don't, even, we didn't do a good job of getting the word out that, that these things did occur. Yeah. I don't want to open a big dialogue on this, but I'm just curious, how much of what goes on in Washington affects what goes on in Albany? Um, a fair amount, and I'll okay. and I'll tell you why. So much, it does, and not just Albany. Let me, let me just say, stuff that goes on in Washington ha affects Albany and Mayville. Uh, it, it, oh, our, our county seat, sure. because filters though. Yes, most of the funds that um, 
that uh, DC sets aside for very worthy projects. Uh, it could be uh, caring for our veterans. It could be um, the uh, uh, um, road repairs, sure. uh, bridges, Chips. roads, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. all, all these things, you name it. They start off as federal funds. However, almost all of them are administered by the state. Okay. And that's where things get kind of strange, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Medicaid, for example. Oh, yeah. Um, federal funding coming through the state. And then most recently, and this was very controversial, the governor decided it's called FMAP, which is a, a, some federal aid. FMAP funds she was going to withhold from the counties, even though it was intended for the counties from the federal government. Mm. But she gave, gave reasons why she felt that, that she should keep that money. So the answer to your question is yes. Things that happen in Washington uh, are somehow, you know, impact Albany. And some things that happen in Albany impact Chautauqua County and every mm. every county. Yeah. Uh, so that's, so the yes. Um, the big issues also have an impact, right? The, mm -hmm. the, the politics at the federal level. Yeah. You know, no doubt about it. Okay. So let's go back to Albany now. Sure. So you're, I know this time of year, I know these things, being a former superintendent, that everybody's anxiously waiting for April 1 to come yes. to see what's going to be in the governor's budget and then yeah. what y'all are going to do if you figured it out yet. So okay. where are you? It says what? Uh, we're going to use the date of February 24 for the viewers, but actually you and I are in the past at February 10th. <laughs> yes. So where are we on February 10th with the state budget, which is like a month and a half, three quarters away? So the, the governor presented her proposed budget, her governor's budget, mm -hmm. um, and uh, everyone reacted to that, uh, and some positive, some negative. Uh, one of the big things that, that was considered a negative in a bipartisan way was uh, cuts to what they call the hold harmless for schools. Mm -hmm. So schools that have lost population, student population, right. were held harmless. They were, their funding was not, never, never cut, yeah. right? Uh, which makes sense because the cost of operating a school isn't based on the number of students. The building's still there. Yeah, exactly. The buses are still yes. there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and by the way, the, you know, the cost of everything goes up, not down. So that was just one example. Mm -hmm. So now we are into our our budget hearings, which we have been doing, uh, and that's where people come in and they testify before a joint session of the Senate and the Assembly uh, in a hearing format. Uh, and these are all day, every day. Well, excuse me, all all day, uh, three days a week. Uh, from in the month of February. And when I say all day, I mean like 9 o'clock in the morning to sometimes midnight. Uh, and oh, and people go in and out. Uh, we have session. Uh, and, you know, for me, I'm, I, I sit on five committees. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm the ranking member uh, of... Uh, of uh, the, I'm, on, I'm on the finance committee. I'm the ranking member of the agriculture committee, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of the elections committee. And the banks committee. So, uh, and then I'm also, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on um, the, the economic development committee. So, all that being said, that means I need to be, uh, especially in my relevant committees, uh, there for the duration to ask questions, listen to their testimony. And because I, I, the finance committee is the overarching committee, the finance committee is the the host committee, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, I, I am allowed to be in any hearing that I want to be in, uh, even if I'm not sitting on the the relevant committee mm -hmm. because I'm on the finance committee. So that's a uh, that's where we are right now. Okay, so it's still being Going molded. On. Right. So so April one's the deadline, supposedly. Yes, I, I we did not make the deadline. I think we were off by three weeks last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we're going to make April one. Uh, only because it's, it revolves around Easter, mm -hmm. uh, and so oh, yeah, yeah, so right. yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah. yes. So I think uh, I suspect we're going to be at least a few days late uh, as okay. a result. We'll see. So talk to me a little bit about the two percent cap that they put on on towns and municipalities and libraries that I'm on. Mm -hmm. um, is that going to be there forever? <laughs> so there's no appetite to undo that now. Of course, with the exception of school districts, everybody has the ability to override that cap. Um, it's a double-edged sword, in my opinion. First and foremost, keep in mind that Albany's not sticking to that 2% cap. Okay, uh, our budget has gone up, uh, gosh, just in the last four years, I think more than 30%. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's more than 2% a year. Obviously. Absolutely, that's, yeah. So, uh, but what does that mean? That means that if Albany's spending that much money, there's all, they're also obligating our local governments to spend more money because mm -hmm. these are mostly unfunded mandates. <laughs> yeah. uh, we all know that term, oh unfunded gosh, mandates, yes. right? So when you tell, when you when you heap uh, huge increases onto local government, uh, 
uh, of in, in what they're obligated to provide, uh, but you cap that increase, that creates a problem for local government. Now, it's easy to blame local government for that, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I can tell you after spending 10 years in county government that um, uh, 85 percent, last I knew, uh, of the, the county's budget uh, is for goes to unfunded mandates. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> I've yeah. lived that life. Yeah, you've lived it as you a supervisor. You want us to what? Yes. And do what? Yes. With no money. <laughs> so you know, it's politically popular to say, well, we just have to keep that two percent cap, and 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 that's why I think it won't go away. Okay. But um, I think people have to understand that you, you know, I agree with you. you know, property taxes are high. Everything mm -hmm. in, in New York State yeah. is high, but it's largely because we have, for lack of a better term, out of control spending in Albany mm -hmm. that trickles down, uh, or as you know, what rolls downhill, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, and that's that's why. So, uh, you have the um, you have the option to, to override that cap and, right, with a majority of your board, right? And, some, and then to the voters, yes. And, then, right. and so some some municipalities do, and some don't, and right. uh, you know that that's kind of the the they they, they think of that as the um, you know. The, the release valve, the fact that you can't override the cap, that's why it's, it's justification for leaving it in place. I know, but it just sort of puts the pressure on the local boards to yes. have to do that, and I get it. It's a, like you said, it's a stopgap measure, but it's just sort of like, okay, yes. you know. All right. Agreed. Um, I got a, believe it or not, I got a question from the crew here. They text All right. me. All right, and, and I'll, I'll ask it the best way I can. Um, I know, especially in our area here, people are very sensitive about First Nations uh, mm -hmm. symbols and mascots and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that one of the school districts here had to change their uh, their, their mascot and their in yep. their title. Uh, is that a come from New York State level or who mandates that? It's the state okay. uh, first and foremost. In fact, the governor did uh, you know did declare that you know anybody that that had a uh, what could be considered a, you know, a, a culturally offensive mm -hmm. uh, school mascot needed to change it, um, and uh, you know, and I, I had at first, uh, my response was, well, I haven't heard any, uh, I haven't heard any um, objection from native territories, mm -hmm. but there indeed is, uh, okay. and um, and there 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 indeed is a. Uh, I don't think anybody, uh, at least locally, I don't think anybody chooses. A, uh, uh, a Native American symbol uh, in, in a derogatory right. way. Right, you I do think, it more as a, as yes, a, as a it, it is respect. A, yes, they are warriors, they are champions, they mm -hmm. are, you know, yeah. uh, because when you're talking about football or whatever, yeah. this is about you being, you know, the yeah. best and being victorious. Right. So it is, it, it is done as a symbol of strength. Right. That being said, um, it is still something that offends people. Yeah. Overall, I would say that um, uh, you know, I think the governor's mandating of this and doing so in a, in a relatively short time frame without any funding mm -hmm. to make those changes. Yeah, it may cost that, money. That, to do yes, that. exactly. That's not correct. That's not right. Mm -hmm. If if there is a uh, a grassroots campaign started by people at the local level, mm -hmm. uh, people who feel that you know, you know that, that this is just wrong, uh, that's different. But for the state to come in and say you have to do this. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, well, at the same time, by the way, she's been dragging her feet on the um, uh, the new compact for the Seneca Nation. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, so on one hand, we're going to be virtuous over here, yeah. and, and the other hand, yeah. things that actually really have a huge impact on the Seneca Nation have been uh, you know, negative impact on the, on the Seneca Nation yeah. have been um, kind of you know uh, set to the side. So, I see. I, I feel that it's, that's what makes me feel it's more political. So in your district, you represent some 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 of the Seneca Nation, yes, the nations. So how do they voice their concerns to you? Do you meet with them? Yes, in fact, um, we have a very, I think, a great relationship with the Seneca Nation, um, with the uh, uh, you know, w w not just with their their government, but with the in individual folks, uh, business owners. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, living where I live, directly adjacent. Uh, to the Seneca Nation of Indians, that you know. The, oh yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, these are folks that are friends, neighbors, uh, customers in our, our sure, restaurants. Sure. Uh, you know, we do business together. Just right? like us with the Amish. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> We yeah, all live together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, for me, it's a little bit more personal. I think that's also helped our relationship. Good. Um, and I think it's they they are a tremendous asset 
to to Western New York, no doubt. and um, they you know they provide a lot of jobs mm -hmm. uh, and economic impact. But but most importantly, I think we're culturally more rich and more diverse as a result. Absolutely. Okay. Well. Uh, I want to thank the crew member that sent that question in because I, yes. I hadn't thought that one. It wasn't on my to-do list here. Uh -huh. Okay, tough question. And I don't even know how to, to phrase this question, but um, the whole I, I keep seeing this on TV, so I'll, I'll ask it. Immigration. I see that um, people are sending, or governor of Texas is sending immigrants here. I mean, it's, it's just so confusing. Mm -hmm. I'm totally lost on this subject. Um, so what's the state of the state with immigration, people coming into into New York State, uh, my, uh, yeah. It's a tremendous burden. Um, uh, New York City right now uh, has, you know, tens of thousands of, of, of people in their care. How'd they get there? Well, so here's the thing. We don't it, live next to the border. No, right. So I know that the popular thought is that this is all Greg Abbott, uh, the, the governor of Texas, you know, shipping yeah, people Yeah, that was up. just one yeah. example. I, right, right. I wasn't putting it all but, 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 but that is, but I have heard the governor and the mayor of New York City mm -hmm. uh, actually blame him for that. Uh, but here's the truth, uh, the reality is, uh, according to the data, only about 10% of the people that are currently in New York, New York City mm -hmm. uh, are actually came there as a result of being, you know, sent on a bus or whatever uh, from the state of Texas. Most of them have come on their own. Most of them, uh, and also a significant portion, have been sent there uh, by what they call NGOs, non-governmental organ organizations. These okay. are uh, char typically charitable organizations that are funded by the federal government. The federal government funds the NGOs, and then the NGOs have put people on buses from border communities mm -hmm. up to uh, places wh wherever they want to go. They ask them, where do you want to go? Well, some want to go to New York, some want to go to Chicago, some wherever. Maybe they have family there. So, or yeah, so 90% oh. of the people that are currently in New York City came there of their own volition or be, uh, because an NGO uh, you know, funded their trip. Okay. Okay. So, that, that, so that, that's helpful because yeah. I, I don't know these so things. Let's, so let's, let's put that out mm -hmm. there as, as, okay. as. Now you have to ask yourself why are they choosing those areas? Okay. Uh, there, there, and, and it is my opinion, and, and it is supported by the data, that it is because New York City is a sanctuary city. Mm -hmm. Which, what does that mean? What does sanctuary mean? That means that New York State, New York City, and by the way, New York State is also a sanctuary state mm -hmm. by executive order from Andrew Cuomo in 2017. But New York City's sanctuary law is much more impactful. It says that if you are in the United States illegally, you, you, you cross the border illegally. Uh, and you come to New York City, we will protect you. You will not. Be, we will not. Our, we will not allow our law enforcement officials to turn you over to the federal authorities for for deportation. It means that if you come here, you will have a right to shelter, uh, and you will uh, indefinitely be cared for by the city of New York. That you we will pay for your housing, your food, your clothing, your health care, your education, indefinitely. That's what sanctuary means. So if you look at the migrant crisis in, in New York, in, in, in throughout the United States, it is a crisis in the border communities, you know, Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, mm -hmm. so on. But beyond that, where, is that, where else is a, a true crisis? It is almost exclusively in sanctuary cities. So to me, that's a direct correlation between being a sanctuary city and being a magnet for those folks who have come here. Well, seems makes sense. Right, yeah. All right, now let's bring it locally, Chautauqua County. What's the the state of the state with immigration here? So we have a few folks here that, that came here, um, uh, you know, uh, undocumented, um, and that they have been cared for. Uh, they are, I know that they have, the President of the United States has uh, fast-tracked some uh, some of their uh, uh, their ability to work, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, in, 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 and they've he's kind of he's done it kind of done it regionally. But if you're from certain uh, countries, okay. uh, I think Venezuela may be one. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I don't quote me exactly which yeah, ones, yeah, yeah. but that's, that's how okay. he's done. Okay, that's how he's chosen you. to done it now to have done it. Now some people will tell you, well, you can't call you can't say these people are here illegally because the federal authorities. Uh, they, they turned themselves over to the federal authorities, and the federal authorities gave them, you know, a, a documentation. I reject that notion, because the federal authorities have no way to actually vet those people. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so you can, you might say that the federal government has somehow given them some kind of a legal status as a, uh, uh, as someone who is, they like to use the term asylum seeker. Mm -hmm. But again, the data shows us that less than 10% of people that came, come here to claim asylum actually have a legitimate claim to asylum. Okay. Um, so when you call them asylum seekers, very small percentage of them actually qualify for asylum. So they're being, they're coming here because of political per, uh, persecution, physical abuse. I mean, there's there's a number of things will come. This under. is being from a poor country mm -hmm. with high crime, uh, poverty is not a qualification for asylum. Oh, it is okay. not. Period. So what that's is? It, it is that you have left the country that you live in because you are essentially an enemy of the state. That you are a political. That 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 should you stay that the government is, uh, w w would, would essentially find you and imprison you or kill you wow. because you are a political dissident. Wow. You know, think of the Soviet Union back Absolutely. in the Cold War. Sure, sure. Okay? That is what asylum is for. It is not because, and, and, and I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm not trying to be cold hearted here, I'm just saying. That, that's me, the definition. That's the definition, okay? Yeah. Yes, it is, we, people want to come here because uh, where they live is, you know, it, it, the, the, the high crime, poverty, you know, corrupt government, you name it. But that is not asylum. Okay, so again, Chautauqua County. We're not a, a, We're not a sanctuary. sanctuary city, a, a county, or anything like that. That's correct. So, to the best of your knowledge, how many people are we talking to have come here now? Hundreds? You know, it's not, uh, it's hard to say, right? Okay. I, I think we are aware of those that are in the care of certain um, charitable organizations. Those NGOs? Yeah, yes. Right. Well, not, not, no, not an NGO. This would be a, a final destination. An NGO is more of like a the, the, transporter, okay, if you will. The in the, yeah, I, I'm talking about, um, you know, like charitable organizations, yeah, okay. uh, you know, like uh, churches, right, um, okay. you know, shelters, things mm -hmm. like that. You know, um, the number is, you know, it, it's, it's hard to certainly pinpoint, but we, uh, we are aware of, it's probably somewhere around 100 or so. Okay. Um, now, you might say, well, that doesn't sound like a lot of people. However, think of this, if you want to put it in perspective. Absolutely. New York City is about 8.5 million people. Mm -hmm. The mayor of New York City declared it a crisis when they hit about 40,000 migrants. 40,000 Right, people. okay, now, but wait a minute. You're talking <laughs> about a population of 8.5 million people. Mm -hmm. That means that at one half of 1% of the population of New York City was overwhelming the system. So we have about 130,000 people here yeah. in Chautauqua County. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means just a couple hundred would overwhelm our system. Yeah. And I would argue it's worse because New York City is one of the wealthiest cities in the world. It has an amazing amount of resources, mm -hmm. uh, amazing uh, amount of infrastructure. Yeah. We in Chautauqua County don't compare to that. So I would argue it's even less of a number, a less of a fraction of a percentage of our population that would create a, a, uh, a, a crisis for us. Well, even though it's not on my list, I can talk about it because I've talked about it here on the show a number of times. I mean, we're, 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 we're trying to cope with our homeless. Yes. And we're not really successful uh, for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. And if we had an influx of a lot of folks that were in similar situations, yes. I mean, homeless, they don't have a home, uh, that, yeah, I could see where that really could be an issue. So, Obviously, I'm going to ask the goofy question. What's the answer? Well, let's let's. Here's the and thing. I say goofy because I don't mean to be insulting. No, because it, it, I don't know if there is an answer. But what would you say? Well, during the hearings, uh, I had a chance to question Mayor Adams of New York City about this topic, mm -hmm. um, and I started off with, "I understand that you know you didn't create this crisis. The crisis is from the fact that our border is not secure. Now, people argue that that's not true, but the numbers don't lie. Right. The amount of people that have come in under the Biden administration is many, many multiples more than ever in history, uh, you know, in, a, in a short period of time. And every and we're breaking new records. It's it's not getting better. We're breaking new records all the time. You know, by day, month, week. The first job is to secure the border. Now, people say, well, the Republicans have blocked it in Washington D.C. The Republicans have done nothing. Let me say this. The legislative branch has to do nothing to give the executive branch the powers that they need to secure the border. The, the president already has that. So to me, it's yes, should they be looking at comprehensive immigration reform? Yes, but that's not the issue we're talking about. We're talking about a national security issue. I mean, to me, it's akin to saying if you walk into a, an emergency room and you're having symptoms of a heart attack mm -hmm. and you want to be treated for that heart attack and the, and the, uh, the emergency room doctor says, well, we're not going to treat your heart attack until we discuss your diet and exercise regimen. Uh, no, 
Treat the heart attack, then we'll discuss the diet and exercise regimen right. to make sure you don't have another heart attack. Okay. Right now, the President of the United States is saying, I'm not going to treat the heart attack until you, until you address the diet and exercise regimen. And that, to me, is fundamentally wrong. Okay. Because we all are watching the ball game right. back and forth, yes. back and forth, yes. back and forth. And it's like, darn if you do and darn if you don't. Yeah. And yeah. no matter what anybody does, they just can't seem to get it. Get it straight. No. Are we getting uh, any immigrants from other countries, from not South America? Absolutely. Um, in fact, uh, not only have there been several hundred people on the terrorist watch list that mm -hmm. have come from uh, as far away as China. Uh, I mean, you have people coming from the Middle East. You have people coming from So Africa. they're coming through South America? They're coming through, yeah, the Mexican border. Uh, you know, and, and again, you can look it up for those who are watching the show. Mm -hmm. Feel free to, to, you know, to Google it or whatever. Uh, but if you look at the numbers, yes, the the majority of these folks are coming from, uh, Columbia, yeah, Venezuela, yeah, yeah, from the uh, from or, Central America and South America. However, right. there is an incredibly significant number of people from Africa. Uh, from Caribbean nations, mm -hmm. from uh, you know nations, uh, quite frankly, in the Middle East that hate us, uh, from China, uh, you have a lot of you have a significant portion of military men. So they you see know, it as a portal. The, absolutely, that's. Uh, and, I did not know that. And there's now been more of a focus and attention on the northern border. Mm -hmm. That because we we've, we've sent so many resources to the southern border mm -hmm. that the northern border is now become a little more vulnerable. Yeah. Okay, ready to switch gears? Please. All right, you and I, <laughs> we, uh, we, we've only got four and a half minutes left. Yeah. And we still got to get to my favorite topic. <laughs> you know what it is? Oh, I know. Uh, uh, just real quick, uh, cannabis. I mean, last time we talked, you said there was all these these rules and regulations and not one dispensary had ever been set up. I mean, where, yeah. are, we, where are we at right now? I mean, uh, Not much has changed. Um, I, I will tell you that... Uh, you know that this has been a disaster, and uh, yeah, you said that even, last time, yeah. yeah, and and I would say now the uh, the Democrats. Uh, it's not just Republicans now that are complaining about this. Mm -hmm. The Democrats are complaining about it. The 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 the, the, the just the, the lack of any kind of a cohesive strategy to get things going. Uh, you, so let's set aside my personal feelings on the legalization of recreational marijuana. Right. Let's just talk about the business and what we were promised. Uh, it's not happening. Right. Uh, we read about it all the time. Yes, we, exactly. People are waiting for their permits. They're waiting to open their stores or whatever. Yes. We have, we have, we have, we have a, a, a grower right here in Chautauqua County that mm -hmm. is hanging on by a thread, mm -hmm. unfortunately, because there's no market. Um, I worked together. Uh, I composed a letter that was signed by 70 of my colleagues, Republicans and Democrats, mm -hmm. asking the governor to sign a piece of legislation that passed overwhelmingly that would allow those licensed growers in New York State who are struggling to be able to sell uh, their their legal tested um, you know uh, certified uh, weed uh, to um, these dispensaries on native territories, mm -hmm. um, which they claim that there's a a, uh, a market for, even yeah. though it's going to cost them more, mm -hmm. um, and the governor wouldn't sign it. Wow. Uh, so and to me, look, I, I uh, again setting my personal feelings aside. You know, these are people that invested, in some cases, their whole life savings. Well, yeah, because they knew that this was an industry coming down the line. Right. Why not jump on it? Right. So, so my role now is to try to address the the crisis that's been created for w farmers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm the ranking member of the Senate Agriculture Committee, and, and uh, our the farmers that have gotten into this business are now suffering. Um, you know, and, and everyone else. So, but this has been a disaster. What what bothers me most is that. Okay, I'm not Nostradamus, but I predicted all of this day one. You uh, told me this. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, you <laughs> yeah. told me all this. Yeah, and, and so everything that I said and many of my colleagues said were going to happen in March of 2021. Now, <laughs> you know, here we are, three years later, has all come true. Yeah. Uh, and um, that's the frustrating part about this is we saw this coming. Okay. One more gear, because it's my sure. favorite, because you know oh, yes. that we have an agreement. Every time I see you, I'm going to ask you about that as the Gateway <laughs> Project. Yes. And we got two minutes, so you, you don't have to talk long. Right. So I, I, I will say this. I hope that there's another new opportunity to look at this. Um, you're seeing great things happening uh, in Ripley. You've, of course, you've seen, uh, uh, I, I guess for lack of term, you could call it Phase 1 with the Love's Travel Center. But really creating that destination of a great Gateway Center is still a dream of mine. It is shared by our county executive uh, by uh, Mark Geis, who, who's the... Oh, yeah. yeah. So um, we still have our renderings, we still have our drawings. It's about funding, and uh, and it's about getting the right partners in there mm -hmm. uh, and getting everybody on board. So, you know, we're behind the scenes. We're still pushing for that. But right. uh, And I know that there's some folks uh, out there that want to see it happen. Nobody wants to, to see it happen more than me, and I'd probably put you at number <laughs> two. two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
So we'll continue to push, um, and I hope that someday people realize that the border of New York State is right here. It's right and, here, not uh, in Grand Island. Yeah, that's right. That's for sure not Grand Island. <laughs> and if we want to, to put our best foot forward for the most number of people that are coming to visit the great state of New York, then there needs to be a welcome center right in Ripley. Thank you. George Borello, you're my 500th guest and my, oh my friend, God. and we've got 54 seconds left. I'm going to let you talk about whatever you want to talk about and wrap the show up. I just want to say how honored I have been to be your 500th guest, and I enter a long list of, of friends and people that you, that you respect and, and love, and I just can't tell you how much it means to me to be here today. You, your crew, have done an invaluable service. And when, when, I, when it says in that, in that proclamation, unsung heroes, you are one of those unsung heroes. All of you that are working behind the scenes here every day are those unsung heroes. And I am so glad and proud, and I hope you have another 500 more and beyond. <laughs> I'll be in my 80s, I think. Yeah. Well, that's a good wish, and I, and I so appreciate what those kind words in, in the proclamation. And uh, like I said, we don't look for that sort of thing, but we do appreciate it. And I want to tell you, as my friend, I appreciate the fact that you are representing us in our county tees, because there's more than one of us uh, in Albany. And, and just keep up the good work and stay in Thank touch you. with me, okay? Absolutely. Thank All right. you. Well, folks, uh, you have just witnessed our 500 show. Amazing. So please continue to watch us, support us, share our sh shows on YouTube, and uh, um, we're, well, all right, another 500, but you've got to be my thousandth guest. you got it. That's, it. <laughs> That's the deal. Oh, my God. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> all right. So have a great weekend, and we'll see you, I guess, in March. <laughs> okay. Take care now. Bye-bye. Thanks, George.